Our next deep dive is with Joe Fabiani with the longest robot in the whole competition. And also has the longest name too. Fabiani's not that long. <laughs> <laughs> Neither is Joe, for that matter. <laughs> but how many E's in Smee is still up for debate. Yeah, well, we can ask Joe right now with Smee. Smee was a bit of a joke originally. I brought it to a competition called Motorama in the three pound weight class. I built it in like two days just to make something fun because I didn't like my other robots at the time. And I sort of left it on the table there overnight. And so I went back to the hotel and I woke up in the morning, everyone was texting, it was all over Facebook and people were really into it. So I was like, whoa, that is not what I expected. And then what I didn't expect even more was that the next day at the competition, it actually did really well. It went won a bunch of fights and it kind of captured everyone's heart. So I was like, okay, uh, it's time to make a heavyweight of this. So I did. Um, this is like what a SME wedge is in the three pound class. I'm using a titanium one now, but it used to be plastic, just like the heavyweight. Here is the wedge for the heavyweight version or part of it anyway. Uh, this is definitely, I think the thickest armor ever put on a battle bot, not in terms of strength, but it just in terms of thickness, it's like seven inches at the, uh, at the thickest point. Um, 75 pounds ish of a wedge, which is kind of crazy. Um, considering it's all CNC machined, meaning this was all a giant jug of plastic and they, uh, they, uh, ground it down to make it this nice shape, have all the holes. And most importantly for the show, the hinges, this is how it actually articulates right here. There's going to be a steel pin in there and that's how it opens and closes. Um, you can see what happens when other robots hit it, even if, uh, even without a weapon, they'll just <laughs> chunk right into it, because obviously these robots are huge, and if they have sharp, pointy wedgelets, like um, you saw a shark and probably make these two holes, I think, uh, just by slamming with its nose, and um, yeah, so it definitely takes damage, and it gets harder and harder to put the vinyl back on each time, and then it gets all bumpy and bumpy, so I'm not, I have to figure out another solution, uh, if I make another one, how to uh, make it pretty every fight. SME is powered by all brushless motors. So these one are one of our drive motors. They're actually really tiny, probably pretty underpowered as far as BattleBots goes, but we built this thing on a small budget, not expecting it to be uh, as fun as it was. So uh, definitely gonna use bigger motors in the future. These were provided by our awesome sponsor, FlipSky. Um, and uh, they just have a direct gear right here to our bigger uh, gears on the wheels. Uh, some of those wheels are 3D printed plastic, some are steel. Um, so with these big skateboard motors, they're great because they don't re really require any, um, they don't really require much reduction. So you don't need to have a big gearbox on there or anything. We just use these because, um, you just gear here, gear on the wheel, and that's all you need. It saves a lot of weight and it's really, really efficient compared to having like multiple stages in a planetary gearbox, something like that. So SME is actually extremely difficult to drive. The small one is okay. It's a little bit twitchy, but the big one is actually hard because it always wants to fold it on itself. Uh, you try to accelerate too hard, it'll fold. You try to back up and it does this kind of weird jiggly thing. And you try to turn and there's a ton of rotational inertia uh, involved in turning because all the weight is on the outsides, which is, um, it means that when you try to turn, it's basically trying to spin way more energy than it would be if it was a small compact robot of the same weight. So whenever I hand the control to someone else just to test in the test box or outside my uh, apartment, um, they actually haven't really been able to get, to get it to move very much, which me, it makes me happy that I, I kind of got the hang of it. it. It started off rough the first couple of fights at BattleBots, but by the end of it, I was really, I was in, in, uh, in sync with the robot. Um, it feels less like driving a car or some kind of mechanical thing and more like trying to operate like some kind of a noodle or something. It's not really stiff. Um, and it's basically all on one stick of the transmitter. So it's all me, just this one stick mixed together. So I, I'm basically kind of trying to, um, kind of twist it around the opponent uh, just by flicking the stick around and sometimes it works and it, sometimes I end up with my back facing them, which is terrible. And I think uh, in terms of improving drivability, uh, I think I need um, probably more torque. Uh, we went with sensorless motors instead of censored ones because um, we don't want sensors failing on us during fights. It's happened to so many other robots and our, our drive was very reliable, even if it wasn't the strongest. So I'm happy that it survived generally becoming faster would be really an improvement. <laughs> so how to spell SME? Um, I would do what I do, which is just whatever feels right. On the robot, I put as many E's as I can fit. So 
I think on the BattleBots robot, it's 19. Uh, on the Beetleweight, it's 18. Sometimes it's less. On the new Titanium Wedge, I think it's less. So there was a time when I would just tell everyone a different number every time and I would spawn arguments on Reddit, which was really, really fun. But now I think it's time to open it up to the masses and they can decide where, wh whatever the context. Maybe they hate me and they only want to give me one or two E's. BattleBots on their Twitter gave me one E. That's really, really sad. So <laughs> depending on how much you like me also, you want to add more E's, less E's, that's great. The funnest fact about the robot is for all of the SME, um, SME lettering on the wedge and on the discs, I had to design the font myself in Fusion 360. I did this because it has to actually be balanced. So the cool thing about this font is with this number of E's and with this S, it's actually perfectly rotationally balanced around the center. So um, you, uh, I didn't have to worry about um, offsetting the weapon or changing the weapon in any way because the actual letters are balanced themselves, which was really, really annoying. But it kind of it's kind of cool because it adds character to the robot to have your own font. It doesn't look like anything you can just draw um, in Photoshop yourself. You have to actually, I mean, I had to actually uh, design it in Fusion 260, both for the lettering on the wedge and on the weapons, which was hard and cool.